Hello everyone. Uh, in the previous two videos, we had discussed a couple of problems uh, related to the uh, circular plate. But in today's video, uh, what I want to do is go back to the general formulation, especially focusing on the boundary condition where we had obtained a term like this. So we had obtained those either or statements and we had obtained a term like this. So one of the boundary conditions uh, had gotten expressed in this fashion that either qn plus del mn is del s is equal to zero or something something and we had another statement also now uh, what we what we usually say is that this particular combination qn plus del mn s del s that is the effective shear so this is the q effective now it is one thing to call it something uh, but it is completely another and certainly more challenging to actually interpret this term as an effective shear so the question that we want to answer today is why this particular combination or why this particular expression is called the effective shear and please note that this is uh, this is not a trivial question and uh, people who had first developed these theories they had quite a challenging time uh, coming uh, coming to a proper interpretation of this it was it was not done immediately okay so uh, I mean once we, once it was done it, it I mean everything was clear so uh, let's let's try to uh, discuss this in as clear a way as possible so first of all what we'll do is we'll just uh, recap for our own benefit uh, the unit of this qn so please note that this qn that is uh, basically this okay so this is sigma nz integrated over the entire height of the plate now you may note that sigma nz that is a uh, shear stress and the unit of this is of course newton per meter square and when integrated over the height it basically becomes this entire integration becomes newton per meter so this thing has the unit of newton per meter so even though we we say that this is like a shear but this is actually the shear per unit length it is very very important to note similarly for the mns you please note that uh, this is basically arising in this fashion now in the previous lectures i had not explicitly written down these expressions because if you remember or if you just go back to those previous videos you will note that this mns it was written as a certain combination of the uh, the moment components uh, in the xy coordinate system we had just uh, obtained this mns through transformation but we had not explicitly written down this particular expression but uh, this is what it is going to be in exactly the same fashion that uh, you are going to obtain the expressions uh, we had in fact written down those things mxy uh, mx my okay so uh, so mx was sigma xxz dz integration from minus h by 2 to h by 2 my was similarly based on sigma yy and mxy was based on sigma xy in a similar fashion this mns is now based on this shear stress sigma ns now uh, just like we were uh, concerned with the unit of this let us check this unit here also this is newton per meter square here there is a meter here there is a meter here so overall what we are going to obtain is this as newton this has the unit of newton all right now uh, before we can actually go into a full-fledged interpretation of this it is important to uh, to really understand what these expressions uh, really are 
uh, in a more graphic or visual sense. So, uh, if we if we reconsider our plate, if we reconsider our plate, which was something like this, and let us exaggerate the thickness. Please note that if it is really this thick, then uh, uh, if it is really this thick, then uh, then the classical plate theory is really not valid. Okay. And the classical plate is really not valid. So, uh, but but this is just like a, a zoomed in view uh, where uh, you can imagine that uh, the thickness has been zoomed in only. Okay, so it's just like a vertical zoom. Anyway, uh, so we had our x axis like this, our y axis like this, and our z in this vertically downward fashion. This is very important to recap. Furthermore, uh, we had also noted that if you look at the ns coordinate system, our n would be like this and the s would be like this. Okay. Now, based on this, uh, these orientations of the x, y, z uh, axis as well as the n, s axis, let us uh, look at the interpretation of this by isolating uh, uh, a little element out of here. Okay, we isolate a little element out of here. We focus on here. So this is the element that we want to focus on. Here, uh, we have our sigma nn in this fashion. This is sigma ns and the z is still pointed downward. Now you please note that because our qn is uh, directly uh, based on this uh, sigma uh, nz, so uh, you can also understand that the sigma nz here will be in this fashion. This is our sigma nz. So the qn will be having the same orientation as this sigma nz, which means that the qn will be pointed downward. Okay, this is very very important to uh, note and remember. So our qn it'll be like this. Next, what about the mns? Well, you see. Uh, if I if I really make this uh, somewhat larger, let's make this even larger. Uh, let us say that this is the midpoint or the, or the mid mid uh, mid plane, uh, and our sigma n s is in this fashion. Now this sigma n s for the definition of m n s it has the moment arm z which means that we have to consider this kind of a moment arm which means that in order to to uh, to, to represent or to, to determine the orientation of this we have to turn in this sense okay this clockwise sense well if it is in this clockwise sense that is generating this mns so overall what is going to happen is that the mns is going to be in this fashion okay so if you curl your fingers around this then uh, the cur curl your fingers of your right hand around this then your thumb would be pointing into this plane 
okay uh, it would be pointing opposite to the uh, to the orientation of the n axis all right now with this uh, little recap or perhaps uh, a clear cut discussion of the direct or of the orientations of qn and mns we are now in a position to to try to interpret this thing okay please note that we are not going to derive anything related to this rather we are going to try to interpret this so please keep an open mind here okay so let me go to the next page and what i'll do is uh, i will consider uh, not one element rather two elements and you will see uh, eventually uh, what the benefit of that is okay there's a little trick here it is this trick okay it is this particular trick of considering two elements and eventually you'll see that we'll have to consider a third element also okay so that is where the trick is and it is this trick which was actually uh, giving a challenge to the early researchers who investigated uh, this theory so so you understand that uh, that this is the positive sense of s this is n and this here this here is z okay now for this particular uh, element we will end up with a moment mns which is in this particular fashion so this is our mns now you understand that uh, so maybe i just so this distance here this is delta s okay so maybe i should have been a little bit more foresightful with the use of the space here but no matter i'll just adjust it okay so this is delta s this also is delta s so both of them have the same length of delta s okay next what i what we are going to say is that this here is also going to have a moment but this moment okay so this moment it will be so this one here uh, will be in this fashion mns plus delta mns del s delta s okay so it is in the same fashion that we are writing this uh, so you can draw an analogy of uh, what we did uh, of what we used to do during our undergraduate mechanics of solids classes uh, so suppose you take a little element like this and on this side you write this as sigma xx and on this side you write this as sigma xx plus del sigma xx del x then delta x where this length is delta x so it is in this fashion that i want you to interpret these two moments okay now the uh, now uh, as soon as we have these things in our hand what we are going to interpret this mns is so you see this is like a couple this is like a couple which is uh, being generated by uh, by a sort of force uh, uh, which is uh, in this fashion okay so you can understand that if you have a force like this mns divided by delta s and you think of it uh, in this fashion that this is a force here and this is a force here so these two forces together will generate this couple so if you if you consider these white arrows uh, they are of uh, magnitude mns by delta s okay so they are mns by delta s 
and it makes sense because in order to find the magnitude of the couple which is associated with these forces which are each of magnitude m and s by delta s you just have to multiply the length between them the perpendicular distance between them which is nothing but delta s so the moment which is or the or the or the value of the couple or the magnitude of the couple which is associated with these white colored forces that is m and s by delta s being the magnitude of the force multiplied by the distance between them which is delta s so the effective thing is actually m and s which is what we started out from so in a similar fashion this particular thing will also have a corresponding force associated with it and please be very very careful with the direction of the arrows that we are using here okay so we are using these arrows in such a fashion that the couple that is generated due to these white colored forces is indeed going to have this kind of a clockwise sense all right so uh, so this particular force this is going to have the magnitude mns plus delta mns del s delta s which is exactly what i have written here but the whole thing divided by delta s okay so each of these forces these white colored forces uh, for this uh, second element that is going to have this magnitude all right now comes the final trick that final trick is to consider a third element uh, which is starting halfway from this first element and ending halfway into the second element so that overall this particular distance this particular distance that is also delta s so why are we doing this we are doing this so that we can actually concentrate on uh, on the midpoint of this element so somewhere here and we are going to consider the actual uh, shear force per unit length that uh, would be considered at this point and that would be so so this is the shear force per unit length arising due to this sigma nz so you will see so if you just focus your attention on this middle element this third element that we have drawn and maybe it will be useful if i just isolate it out here what we are doing is if you forget about everything else and i ask you that what is the shear force per unit length considering this point i'm sure all of you will be e easily able to answer that this is qn arising due to the sigma nz now because we are considering this third element in this particular fashion where the effect of the moments associated with the sigma ns is also there we have to recognize the fact that we already have a contribution from the from the force like entities which we had generated by a reinterpretation of the mns and this particular moment okay so all in all the kind of effective force per unit length okay force per unit length that we'll have for this third element that is going to be in this way so we have a contribution from qn directly from here we'll also have a contribution from this white colored force this white force has the has this thing so uh, let me actually draw that in white and please note that this orientation and this orientation is the same which is why this is white in color so i'm just repeating whatever i had written down here All right and 
We'll also have to write down the contribution from this, but please note that this has the opposite sense of this. Okay, so uh, there's a negative here, and let us not forget that the magnitude of that force is this m n s delta s by delta s. Now, if you just simplify this, you will see that this, uh, sorry, and there should not be a delta here. This delta is wrong. So, you will see that in the next step, if I just write this down, this is nothing but Qn plus del MNS del S. Because this delta S, this delta S cancels, and this MNS by delta S cancels with this MNS by delta S. So, it is in this fashion that we are interpreting the effective force uh, along the z direction for uh, for a generic element like this okay so uh, it's a little bit uh, convoluted and you need to put in a little bit of effort to wrap your head around it but the moral of the whole story here is to note that had you just considered the contribution from the sigma nz then you would have completely discounted the contribution from the MNS, that is the contribution from the sigma NS, which is also contributing um, in the vertical direction effectively. Okay, so, uh, so of course, originally the sigma NS is contributing uh, shear forces in the S direction, there is no doubt about it, that's a horizontal shear component. But through the generation of this moment, and the interpretation of this moment in terms of this couple, we are seeing that it is effectively contributing in the vertical direction also. So, uh, uh, unless we do this kind count of a uh, of an interpretation, we will completely miss that contribution, and it is going to be wrong. Okay, so this is uh, rather important, and this is how you need to interpret the effective shear force. Okay, so the effective shear force is basically the force or the force per unit length uh, in the uh, z direction okay uh, which takes into account the contributions from the various shears so on that note i'll end this video thank you very much